And well guys, here we are, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today, you might hear some background noise because they are doing some construction here, they're basically rebuilding a wall and don't worry, it is not the Mexican border they're building, so you're fine, most of you are fine. Uh, but now seriously, some of you guys watched my previous video doing the driver only versus minimal install versus full install on the MD drivers. And most of you went immediately to the comment section and asked me and asked me sorry to do the same with the Nvidia drivers. So here I am doing it because as always I do my videos for you guys. So if you request those videos, I'm eager to make them. So for today's video we have the driver only on the NVIDIA side using the NVClean install to install the driver only, uh, also taking out telemetry of course and installing the control panel, so really really driver only. Driver only versus minimal install, the minimal install presented on the NVIDIA drivers which basically includes the control panel only, basically driver plus control panel and I believe telemetry must be there, uh, kind of hidden from sight but it must be there and then we have the full installation which is the normal installation that most users do with the driver control panel and GeForce experience and on top of that as a bonus since we now have the NVIDIA app it is still on beta so it might have some issues for some people that's why it is on beta but as a bonus I also included results for that so we have driver only minimal install full install and then full install plus the NVIDIA app and once again if you don't know the NVIDIA app kind of over overwrites the GeForce experience. You still have the control panel, but you have control panel plus NVIDIA app. If you want to know more about it, just go to this video that I made like some weeks ago of the new NVIDIA application. I've been using it on some computers and it is running fine so far. It has a, an issue here and there, but overall in terms of stability, it is running fine. But what about performance? So let's go to the important benchmark results, almost as important as today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So, benchmarks. Starting with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and the RTX 3070, unlike with AMD cards we do have some differences, but it is mostly when we use the new NVIDIA app, mostly of course, where you lose around 6 FPS at 1080p and 3 FPS at 1440p. With the RTX 4070 it is more or less the same, with all configurations apart from the beta app having higher performance, with the app being around 6% slower at 1080p and 4% slower at 1440p. Moving to Banisher's Ghost of New Eden, we have a different scenario now, with the drivers only configuration delivering slightly better results across the board and with the NVIDIA app not affecting the performance more than the normal full installation. Something that still applies to the RTX 4070 as well, that when more CPU driven at 1080p performs better with drivers only or the minimal installation, which once again is nice. With Microsoft Flight Simulator, the RTX 3070 presents decent results, with all configurations performing the same apart from the new NVIDIA app of course, but once again it is still on beta. As for the RTX 4070 we did have some very odd results, with the drivers only delivering lower results at 1080p than both minimal and full installations, which sincerely is quite odd. Still the full installation is still performing quite better than when using the new NVIDIA app. PUBG it is, and this is a scenario that I wanted to test since I knew it would bottleneck the little Ryzen 7 8700G, as it seems the driver configurations make a bigger difference in CPU bound scenarios. Here we can see that even with the RTX 3070, where at 1080p the full installation does not only deliver slightly less average FPS, but also way lower 1% lows. And if we count the NVIDIA app results, it is 13% slower than the driver only mode. With the RTX 4070 we still see a slightly lower 1% lows, uh, well with the full installation versus the driver only and minimal, but everything is more or less inside the margin of error, with the NVIDIA app really tanking the performance this time, being 11% slower at 1080p and 9% slower at 1440p. 
Spider-Man Remastered is another title well known to be dependent on CPU and RAM, but it seems that it doesn't really care about drivers' installation methods. Well, at least at 1080p, as at 1440p with the RTX 3070, it does perform considerably slower when using the Nvidia app. The result gap gets shortened with the RTX 4070 though, where the app is still slower than the other configurations, but since this is a gameplay we could well very well say that the results are all within the margin of error. And Starfield is one of those titles that is poorly optimized of course, but it is very stable in terms of results, so it is kind of a great benchmark. In here we can see that this game, at least with the RTX 3070, doesn't care at all which driver configuration you are using. Which is a good thing if you ask me, of course. Thing that does not change with the RTX 4070 that also delivers very stable results, with even the NVIDIA app delivering the same results as the other configurations. The Last of Us has some odd results to be honest. Maybe the driver only option doesn't have resizable bar profiles or something because I can see why driver only would have lower results than both minimal and full installations at 1080p. Although we do have the same results at 1440p in a GPU bond scenario, with the only real difference being once again with the Nvidia app. Difference that somehow does not happen with the RTX 4070 that has results within the margin of error for all scenarios. Although we do have the driver only performing slightly worse at 1440p, which is odd, but can happen. And The Witcher 3 also had some odd results, honestly. Firstly, all the results are on par, with the NVIDIA app option delivering lower results, obviously, but somehow the full installation option delivered considerably worse results at 1080p. My brother was doing the test and he said that sometimes the results would vary, and I believe that happens because of the 8GB VRAM on the 3070. That just aren't enough because as we go to the RTX 4070, the results are much more stable, with the Nvidia app now being 9% slower at 1080p and 6% slower at 1440p. But overall, once again, way more stable. In Counter-Strike 2, when using very high settings, even the RTX 3070 gets to be the bottleneck here, so the results are pretty stable overall, with the driver-only option delivering the best results at both resolutions, being 6% faster at 1080p. As we go to the RTX 4070, the results are a little more unstable, but that's also due to the higher amount of FPS being pushed. For example, in this case, a 15 FPS difference is only 4% which is a bit out outside of the margin of error for sure, but overall the results are still more or less the same as even the NVIDIA app is showing some really good results here. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is also a CPU dependent title as well, well at least regarding high FPS numbers of course, but in this case we're only around 100 FPS with an RTX 3070, so the results are expected. With the RTX 4070, things are way more linear regarding performance, with basically all results being on par apart from the NVIDIA app that keeps reducing the performance by a bit, but this time less than before. Hogwarts Legacy is one of those titles that CPU-wise the results are all over the place sometimes, and I don't really know why this happens, but it does. At least to me, of course. With the RTX 3070, we have, at 1080p, driver-only and minimal installation performing better than both full installation and NVIDIA app, which can be understood. But at 1440p, somehow, we get minimal installation to be the only one performing slightly better compared to all others, which is odd. And the same crap happens exactly to the RTX 4070. At 1080p results are more or less what they should be, but at 1440p we got yet another performance decrease when using driver only, which honestly makes no sense. Moving to Unreal Engine 5, we have Robocop Rock City, and here the results are what I expected, and the small variations you see at 1080p happen because this is a gameplay benchmark instead of an inbuilt one, so the margin of error is larger. But in both scenarios, the Nvidia app does decrease the performance a bit, something that keeps happening with the RTX 4070 that now has a bigger performance loss when using the beta Nvidia app, losing 8 FPS at 1080p and 6 FPS at 1440p. I mean, it won't break your game experience of course, but this comes to show that the Nvidia app still needs a bit more tweaking, and that's exactly why it is still in beta. 
Fortnite, though, is one of those titles that doesn't care about the different driver installation methods at all, with all tests delivering extremely solid results on the RTX 3070, and that doesn't really change on the RTX 4070. We do have some more 1% lows variations at 1080p, for sure, but in terms of averages, things are where they should be, and as soon as we go to 1440p, the results are once again rock solid. And the last game is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, where the performance is quite stable as well for all normal configurations, but once again, the RTX 3070 does lose some performance when using the NVIDIA app, something that gets translated to the RTX 4070 as well, that achieves quite the higher frame rates, of course, because it is a faster card, with the NVIDIA app delivering 12% less performance at 1080p and 7% less performance at 1440p, which in my book is quite a lot. As for the average FPS numbers, I believe the differences are really small as they affect mostly some specific games. So when doing averages, even the NVIDIA app that, were sometimes, that was sometimes performing, let's say, from 5 to 10% slower, stays a bit below the 4% performance loss overall. And the overall difference is even lower if we're talking about the RTX 4070, that still loses around 4% with the NVIDIA app, but the other installation methods are all within the margin of error. Well, more or less like the RTX 3070, but less. Which is a good thing in my book, as apps or features included in the drivers should not decrease the performance at all. Let's move to the final thoughts. So... Conclusion. As you saw, in terms of results, things are more or less on par with, with what we expected, at least in terms of the driver only versus minimal install versus full install. And I know some of you guys actually told me that in some games it does make the difference. And you were right. Unlike with the AMD drivers where the, where the difference was really, really small, almost non-existent, with the NVIDIA drivers, in some specific games, not in all, but in some specific games like PUBG, Fortnite for example doesn't really care, but PUBG, and some other games like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and so on, the driver installation method does make the difference, with the drivers only usually running slightly better in some scenarios, let's say from 5 to 10% at most, but if you're using the new NVIDIA application, you also need to know, and that's why I made this video one of the reasons as well, you need to know that the performance will be inferior to the, um, to the normal driver installation in some scenarios. If you go to some newer games, let's say Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden, if you go to Fortnite, if you go to some other games, the difference will be zero. But as soon as you go to other games like PUBG and some others, when using the NVIDIA app, you will have lower performance. In some cases, up to 15%, which is insane. Most of all, it is in between the 5 and the 10% mark, but in some games it can get up to 15%, and that's a lot of performance lost just from an application. And I guess, once again, that's why it is beta. I guess I can retest it once again as soon as it gets released officially to see if the performance drop is still there or not really, because once again, if this is to be kept for the, um, for the official drivers when it gets released, it won't be good because the performance drops will definitely be there in some games. And that's a thing that gamers don't want, of course. And the other conclusion of the final thoughts is, you shouldn't even care about this. If you are going to anything besides the NVIDIA app, you should not even care about this because the performance difference will be minimal. Now, if you don't want those all, all those things that GeForce Experience brings and so on, you can go with a minimal install. Or if you don't even want the control panel, you can even go with the driver only using NVClean install and you will be sure to not have any issues or something like that because the let's say that the, the lowest amount of software that you have, the the higher the probability the, the higher the probability, sorry, of you not having issues. That's usually how it works. Although with the NVIDIA side we don't have as many as the AMD side, usually in some scenarios we have even more. So it kind of depends on the build. I personally, in my experience and my brother as well, we test several cards, we test AMD, we test NVIDIA, even Intel ones like the A770. And usually in our experience, NVIDIA cards tend to give us more problems than the, the AMD ones, unlike what people think. But overall, in terms of general stability, they're more or less the same. And in terms of features and so on, NVIDIA has a bit more on their side. And that's why people tend to pin more to, to their systems, I believe. 
But yeah, that's a topic for another video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the, um, the minimal install versus full versus driver only versus the NVIDIA app. Just let me know your experience because once again, these are our benchmarks in, uh, in two cards. But there are different systems, there are different configurations and in those, the results might be different and I really want to know them in the comment section. So please do let me know. Thank you very much once again and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.